Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 83. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 100 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now, here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2 And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. It's been a heck of a week. It has been a great week. It's been a great week. Busy. We, we took our brand new RV, Eleanor, which is a grand design. Imagine. Imagine, 2600 rear bath. We took her on her very first trip. It was local. But it was a great trip and I cannot emphasize enough, there is something new to look at within 30 minutes or an hour of your house. Something that you don't see every day and something different is something awesome sometimes. Yeah, and we liked it because we made everything very simple. Setup was quick, teardown was quick, and we made our food quick. We wanted to just focus on some me time. We've been talking for the last couple of weeks about getting some me time in. It's it, You really need to take that time, and this is something that we have not done for years, in taking that time to relax, because the bottom line is, Stress causes weight gain. Stress causes you to hit stalls. Stress causes your blood pressure to go up. And the only way you're gonna get rid of that stress is to take some me time. It was interesting for us to kind of use our snacks because at home, snacks can be a problem. The prepackaged stuff that we love, great products, I can overindulge in at home, mm -hmm. but in a picnic situation or I'm going someplace and you're packing them a basket of them for the entire weekend, I don't have a problem eating one right. in a day. It was an amazing thing that we just went in a camper and took the snacks and I didn't have a snack problem, No, but we used them to help us cut the time off of cooking. Yeah, we have this whole basket of different types of Keto snacks, keto prepackaged foods, things that we like that aren't like filled with horrible ingredients. Yeah. Things like pork rinds or you know the um, the keto farms, keto brick, things like that. But one perfect keto bar was plenty enough. Right. Now at home for some reason, I will do a drive by on a box of perfect keto bars and want to eat more than one in a day. And it's a, it's a super challenge. We, we've we talked about even having to hide our snacks at home. Well, they were out full on the dining room and table. they're pretty much still there. I think we had three things out of the no, whole package. I didn't have a problem with it. Yeah. We used them for what they were meant for, keto on the go. And one of the things that we like about keto on the go is we also like keto chow. And yeah. so I did want to mention real quickly, Keto Chow Flavor of the Week. This week is banana, which, so that'll get you 10% off. Which is a crazy good banana. I am not always in love with it banana flavors. It took us a year to try it. Because I'm not usually a banana fan. It's an awesome banana flavor. It is. You had a struggle this week you wanted to talk about. Well, it wasn't a struggle. It was a potential struggle. And it's something that has haunted my past. And we're talking about in the month of October, what are some things that have haunted your doorstep yes. for way too long that you'd like to get rid of? And one of them is making the transition from vacation to regular life. And this is particularly important going through the holidays because maybe you're not going on a vacation vacation, but maybe you're going to a holiday party. Yeah. Maybe you're gonna have some family come and visit because this is the time of year when it's cooler and, and families will start visiting you. And so you eat differently. You almost vacation eat when you get together. Yep. How do you make that transition from vacation eating where it is a bunch of keto snacks on the table and, and a lot looser on maybe your meal plan? How do you make that transition when it's Monday morning and you wanna get back to eating what is right? Yeah. And for me, it has been about sticking with the daily goals. This day I'm on vacation and this day I am not on vacation. And waking up in that morning and saying to yourself, where you're at, where are you at? What are your plans for today? If I take it a week at a time, I'm gonna mess myself and wreck myself. 
and we are looking at camping or vacationing every other weekend. Right. So I could go into a spiral pretty quickly. Yeah, I was just gonna say, we're, we're doing this every other weekend. So this is something that we really have to get under control because otherwise, we're gonna balloon up. Even if it's not eating any kind of products like Keto Brick or occasionally having a fat snack cookie, which I think we've had one in like a month. But if you, even if you're just doing like loads of burgers, like when we go camping, we're kind of like, you, you know see what? See we, we fill up our plate and maybe we want it. That's usually when we're gonna have like a little bit of, you know, ice cream or something like that, like enlightened ice cream or the cheesecakes or something like that. So. If we're doing this every other week, we have to make sure we're constraining that kind of stuff to that day. And I'm glad you mentioned the holidays because this is a place where I struggle. So you have a holiday come up and like, listen, it's already October. We have Halloween coming up. Yeah. I don't know what Halloween's gonna look like this year based on like COVID and all that other stuff. But then you look at Thanksgiving. I mean, most of us are still gonna get together yeah. with our you know, families for Thanksgiving. How does Thursday not tra turn into Friday, Saturday, Sunday? That's what I was gonna say. In the past, we our family actually does Thanksgiving on Wednesdays because in the past we were always like the big Black Friday shoppers. Rachel's brother was always off on th Wednesdays. It just, it made it nice so that the whole family could get together and nobody had to rush out like for work early on Friday morning or anything like that. But what would happen for us is that Wednesday or Thursday Thanksgiving meal became a Thanksgiving weekend. Yep. And instead of just eating a little bit too much on that one day, we were eating the leftovers on Thursday, the leftovers on Friday. Le oh, look, there's still some of that sweet potato casserole in the fridge on Sunday. And in holiday quantities, and, celebration quantities. Right. So not only do we have to learn to get like a rain on going on vacation and coming home and saying, okay, you're back to normal eating, not vacation eating, but you need to get in that mindset as the holidays roll around that if you are going to go to a Thanksgiving party or a Christmas party or Thanksgiving dinner or Christmas dinner. And again, we are not advocating going off of keto. We do not go off of keto. We don't look at ourselves and say like, it's Thanksgiving, so we're allowed to have regular sweet potatoes. But we do eat like it is a, a little, golden corral buffet yes. for Thanksgiving like everybody else. And I think in the past, you know, we did what everybody did. You you compared, hey, what's more important, family time or my health goals in this morning? I don't want to sacrifice in order to, you know, miss out on stuff. You can have both. Right. It doesn't have to be either or. You don't have to let your family time derail all of your health goal process. I mean, progress and and then wake up January 1st and be like, I got to rein it back in. Wouldn't right. it be nice to start the new year and just continue momentum instead of having to traverse that mountain once again? Yeah. So when those holidays come around, have a piece of keto cheesecake if you want that kind of a thing or a keto cookie or something like that. But leave it to that meal yeah. and then don't bring it on to the next day or the next meal or even the next week, which we sometimes do, right? We've totally done it. So you want to get into our like keto professors and stuff like that? Keto college. Let's take a quick commercial break and then we're going to get back into keto college. See you soon. Well, hello there. <laughs> You like that. I love it. It's only like two seconds on our side, but it feels like you're re-entering the room like, hey. Well, this is the section of Keto on the Couch where we like to celebrate you guys, our subscribers. And we divide it into several portions. First, we have our Keto College, and then we also get into our Subscriber of the Week, and then finally, all of the different comment sections. And the Keto College is from posts that we found either in the comment section here on our YouTube videos or in the Facebook family group. And they're things that inspire either us or you guys as the family members for Two Crazy Ketos. And this week, we actually have two of them. First, because I couldn't pick. And second of all, both of these were really inspiring to me because they address things that happen in our personal journey. And they let us know you're stronger than you think. Yeah, so the first one is gonna be from Stephanie. Hey Stephanie, she says, am I odd or not alone in this theory of thinking? Why do people that live the keto carnivore, ketovore lifestyle say they want to cheat or have a cheat or did cheat? This is a lifestyle, not a diet diet. To me, that is like a person who is on the standard American diet saying that they are going to or did or might cheat by eating a keto or carnivore meal. I hope I made my point. You don't cheat. You just choose to eat differently for a meal or two. 
thinking of it that you cheated is to me setting yourself up for failure and guilt that you should not be there. This is so brilliant, mm-hmm. and it's something that we we really try to talk about all the time. Yeah, how you talk to yourself matters. Yes, it's important what you think of yourself. Yeah, and how you talk to yourself because if you talk to yourself like you're a cheater, like think about the heaviness and the weight of thinking of yourself as like a cheater, a failure, you're yeah. dirty, all of those. Those words, they matter. Yeah. I mean, you hear the term all the time of like, you are what you eat. Well, you are what you think. If you think you're a fat person, you're going to be a fat person. Yeah. If you think that you're a dirty person because you're eating dirty keto, then you're labeling yourself as that dirty. And it's not good for your self-esteem, the way you think of yourself. And ultimately, it's not gonna be good for all of your different health goals. I mean, one of the things that we do, even when we get pets, people ask us all the time, like, where did you get the names for your pets? We believe that whatever you name your pet or your child or anything like that, that's what's gonna happen. So if we give our pets a positive name that means something like positive, yeah, then we can get that joy. But like naming your pet something that say, for example, means peas on the rug. Right. You know? <laughs> Don't be surprised when it pees on the rug. Right. And that's the thing. I mean, you can lose weight. But if you have not changed your relationship with yourself and how you talk to yourself, you're not even going to enjoy the weight loss. And this isn't just about losing weight or getting better healthy. It's about enjoying your life. Yeah. And I think it's important that we change the way that we talk to ourselves. And I think Steph is making a great point. I love it, Steph. Thank you so much for reminding us of that. And again, we talk about, you know, we don't believe in like cheating like off of keto, but we'll say even sometimes we're guilty of, we're gonna have our cheat meal and our cheat meal is we're allowed to have 30 total carbs instead of 20. And that is something that we really need to get out. Like one of the things we've even talked about that we caught ourselves saying all the times is you deserve this. Like you worked hard, so you deserve an extra like, you know, keto cookie or something like that. We need to take every thought captive because the mind really is a battlefield. Yep. So the next one is from Cindy. Hey, Cindy. And Cindy said, I've had to change my mindset to stop focusing on losing weight to staying active as I age. I now ask myself how I'm moving. Next summer, I turn 60 and my goal is to age active, riding my bike, working in the yard, walking, hiking, and now camping. This past weekend, we rejoined the camping world, thanks to Joe and Rachel. I looked back over the weekend and felt blessed that I could bend and lift and squat as we set up and took down camp. We hiked with our large dog and even had to lift him into the camper as he's scared of steps. I'm tired of trying to weigh a certain weight or look a certain look. I want to be active and strong as I age and keto is a gift to achieve that. And she actually put up a couple of pictures. Take a look at this. First of all, look at that pop-up camper. That thing is awesome looking. Awesome. I just have to say. You do not look 60. No. no. I really hope I look like that when I'm 60. Well, she's not 60 yet. She's still 59, but... She looks amazing. You don't even look 40. Yeah. So I think she's I think she's fooling us. I really like that post because this is something that we struggle with all the time. We're like, I want to see that number on the scale. I want to see that number on the scale. But we forget all of the other benefits that we're getting from this lifestyle. Again, I'm going to be 50 years old in a couple of months. Yeah. And the fact that I can go on these different trips, we can go and bike ride 12 miles in 100 degree heat. That was not a thing Which you saw in that vlog. If you didn't see it, I'll leave a link over Rachel's head. The fact that we were able to set up a pop-up camper, take down a pop-up camper, do all of that work, go kayaking, and I'm not tired. Mm -hmm. And many times we're doing it fasted or like we're... Waking up in the morning, we're doing all of these different activities and not eating until seven o'clock at night. So all of the activities are fasted. That's only because of this lifestyle. And I need to keep remembering for myself, like you're almost 50 and you're doing things that some 30 year olds don't have the energy to do anymore. Well, I know a lot of people probably think, why are, why am I seeing pictures of you camping and biking and canoeing? You know, this is just a, a keto channel. Shouldn't we just be talking about the food? And one of the things that we think is important to share 
are these activities that you're able to do once you get your health in check? Because this is so new to us. I am only used to dieting and then putting the weight back on. Yes. I have never thought of what's next. Right. What's next after we meet our health goals and, and we just start to live our life? Is there life after losing weight or do you just go back up again? So the right. fact that we're not going back up, we're staying the same, we feel energetic, it's not just a fluke, we can start living our life. Right. Now, we do know that some people don't want to see our camping stuff. Right. You know, other than what are you eating on the camping trip. Yeah. So we are launching a brand new channel, which when you see this it's will up. be launched. It is called Two Crazy Campers so that we can stick with the whole 2KK. And it's going to be one big family, but two separate channels. And you can go over and take a look at that. I'm going to leave a link for that right over Rachel's head. There's only a couple of videos up right now, but we're going to be putting a few up. And then it's probably going to be like one a week, one every couple of weeks, like whatever we're doing, some tips, some tricks, looking at different campsites, um, maybe reviewing RVs, things like that when we get to go to different areas and you know different things like that. So hopefully you guys will go and join a little shameless plug. We are starting over. So we would greatly appreciate it if everybody would go over and just subscribe to the channel so that we can not have a big fat zero on subscribers right or now. Or like one because you know mom. Right. Mom will, mom will subscribe. Mom will subscribe. But one of the reasons we decided to have another channel was number one so we don't bombard you guys yeah. with all camping stuff. If you don't want to see it. But also we think we have some really good ideas and are enjoying life as older people who are about to be empty nesters. And we feel like we could share that with other people who aren't keto. And hopefully they will learn about the keto lifestyle. If they see people having good success, maybe they're already an RVer, because we do see a lot of RVers when we go to campsites that are just sitting on the bench, right. not enjoying what's around them, because maybe they're retired and they're enjoying their RV that is a beautiful RV, but they're not getting out and exploring the nature around it because it's too hot and, and their health issues you know, prevent them from getting all of the fun out of camping. So maybe we can help them to like learn about the keto lifestyle. I mean, if one family were able to extend their life together by six months or a year, wouldn't you do it? Wouldn't yeah. it be worth it? Like we just want families to be able to enjoy each other, enjoy their life. Yeah. Ultimately, our baby is two crazy ketos, but we've said this all the time that we want to impact as many people as possible. We want as many people as possible to find out that they can have better health through diet without having to rely on drugs, without having to have doctors tell them like you need this and this and this and this and this and like, oh my gosh, you're eating too much bacon, you're eating too much steak, like, you know, you need to cut all that stuff out. We wanna like really help different people learn that there's an alternative. So we figure if we can have another channel that's not keto because these people obviously aren't looking for right. keto, but maybe they'll discover keto through our adventures on camping. We'll do whatever we've got to, to change this world. That's right. Okay, now it's time for our subscriber of the week. Now our subscriber of the week actually comes from our Facebook family group. If you're not a member of that, please go and join the Facebook family group. It is full of, I don't even know how many people are in there now. Almost 3,000. 3,000 people in there sharing their stories, telling you about deals, recipes, and most importantly, encouraging each other. Because that's why we started this channel. Oh yeah, and every single time that you say hi to somebody that's new and like, hey, thanks for the ad, and you guys say welcome, and you encourage them, and you share your stories, that's like, letting someone sit next to you at the lunch table. I mean, you really don't even know what a blessing it is to just come into a space like that and feel welcome, feel like you belong. One of the things I loved is your mom the other day was putting up pictures. She decided to go to one of the local parks and go on a nice hike and she was putting up nature pictures and everybody in the Facebook group identifying with her, telling her good job, and she was able to share back and forth and encourage other people, and that's what it's all about. But we ask you to share your stories because here's the thing, there is somebody out there right now that is going through either something that you've gone through or that you were going through, and they're sitting there going, I'm all alone. Nobody knows what it's like. Nobody has ever dealt with this. And when you tell your story, you're able to encourage them because they're able to look and go, oh, somebody else knows what this is like. Yeah. They can help me. 
So please go share your story. And if you don't have Facebook, that's fine. Send us an email at twocrazyketos at gmail.com and we can put up your story that way. So this week's subscriber of the week is Edward. Hey Edward, he says, after five months down, 84 pounds and still going. You don't even look like the same person. He looks like his own son. I know, right? I mean, he, 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 he vaguely looks familiar to himself. <laughs> Congratulations, Edward. Amazing. Keep up the good work. And Look again, great. everybody, please send us your stories. We love seeing stories. That's the whole focus of Keto on the Couch. We don't want the stories so that we can get more views or anything like that. We want to be able to celebrate with you. Okay, so before we get into the comments, let's take another commercial break. Bye. Just kidding. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> Okay, first comment is going to be from Stacy. Hey, Stacy. Stacy said, found your channel a few days ago, and I find you guys so relatable. Thanks, Stacy. I've been practicing a keto diet for about two years now, but I have been in the last couple of weeks starting to incorporate fasting, and I love your advice and your experiences. Thanks, Stacy. Boy, we blow it a lot. We do. I mean, but I, you guys are so awesome to just love us through the struggles and I really hope that that other people like Stacy that you see you know keep going yeah that's the message keep going and even when we mess up and we have struggles we're just gonna put it out there and share it so that hopefully somebody can avoid some potholes that we've fallen into right and and just be encouraged that like this thing works yeah. just keep going Okay, next one is from Annie. Hey, Annie. She says, you guys are a blessing. I truly love watching and love that you share your life with us. Oh, thank you very much, Annie. I do have to say this, though. I know everybody's like, oh, you guys are so awesome and you bless us. Honestly, you guys are the ones that are blessing us. You're the blessing. I mean, you keep us accountable. You keep us motivated. And I honestly don't know where we would be if it weren't for all of you guys in our Facebook family group and here on our YouTube family. think about it. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Krista. Hey, Krista. Krista said, I love that you are actually on a couch from last week's Kid on the Couch. She said, thanks so much for your open hearts. You two are the best. Monday, I will be seeing a nutritionist and doing an elimination diet in an attempt to get rid of my asthma. I did a seven day water fast a while back and realized my asthma was triggered by something I was eating. Wow. I managed to convince my doctor, which is not an easy thing to do in England on the national health system, to let me see someone to help me on uh, my quest to be drug free. Through keto, I have already gotten off all meds except for my inhaler, so I am really looking forward to this journey. Thank you for filling me with inspiration to see this through. I love being part of your family. I love that you're part of our family, and I love that. I will definitely be praying that you find what the problem is mm -hmm. quickly, because I know that that can be a frustrating process, and we actually have a friend of ours who went through an elimination diet trying to find out, you know, what was the problem. It was cilantro. Do you know how many yep. things that she had to go through to figure out cilantro was the problem? And let me tell you, cilantro put her in the hospital. I mean, this was something where she absolutely needed to find out what is causing all of these problems. So I am a huge advocate in slowly taking out different ingredients to just say what makes me feel better and what makes me feel worse. Right. So I'm, I'm excited for you. Okay, next one is from Jeannie. Hey Jeannie, she says, yes, get highlights and let the natural grow in. So much better than trying to bleach all the dark out, it kills your hair. Getting mm. the highlights makes the new growth kind of a blend in. Not pretty for a while, but so glad I did it that way. My hair was in such better condition. We are still on the gray question. I am so excited. Are you doing the silver? I'm absolutely doing it. We had I'm excited about this. Talk about like excitement and hair in this household. Anthony got a haircut yesterday, <laughs> the first in two years. And um, it doesn't he, look like it was cut. No, he just got a trim and like the underbrush. Okay. He got that like trimmed out. But it was funny when he sat down, the stylist actually said, I'm not cutting this. This actually looks very healthy and is very thick. He had, and he's like, everybody wants this thick, lustrous hair. It's rare that it's sitting in my seat. I'm not cutting a bunch of all this off, <laughs> but actually the haircut helps it to not have all the dead ends. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Cherie. Hey Cherie, she says, love all the advice. Went natural with my hair color a while ago. Years only drawback is natural warning for redhead temper is gone. <laughs> Uh-oh. Folks just get surprised. You're a little bit of a redhead in there. It is, it's funny because yeah, 
course, nobody would know it. But no, my my grandfather was like full redhead. My my brother is a redhead, and so yes, there is no warning. There is just well, the only thing is I don't have much of a poker face. So right. if I'm getting upset, my mom face like comes on like pretty pretty quickly. Okay, next one is from Ingenerant. I think Ooh, that's how you pronounce that's it. A cool name. It says we just bought our rear bath travel trailer with a bump out last month. Nice. We enjoy traveling in the wintertime and we decided to get our own trailer when we were staying at a four star hotel in New York, New York in Vegas. Last year I woke up at three AM due to bed bugs biting me. Bed and bugs? we had a two room suite. By the way, no gambling for us. We just wanted to enjoy the weather and boy did we Oh walk. my gosh, yes. It would be very hard for me to recover from a bed bugs incident. Ugh. Yeah, we that's one of the things we like about the camper is we we're looking at it's like how it's gonna open things up that we can do a little <sighs> bit of traveling. Like we wanna so sorry. get up to like the Jacksonville area. You're still thinking about bed bugs. Uh, I would I would be out. I'd be like, <laughs> pack the bags and like we're never staying anywhere that we yeah, can't pull behind us. We, we like the fact that we don't have to think about hotels. Now, walking, that I, I'm not a gambler either, but I like going to Vegas. And it's been years, but it's, I like going so just for all of the sightseeing to see. and the amount of walking. You know, walk from like the old strip to the new strip. I mean, you can get your steps in in Vegas. I am a theme person. And so I love how they maintain the theme for each individual hotel within it. Like I love, I actually like we seeing- We need to do Vegas together. I, I would love that. I loved seeing New York, New York. I mean, it's a cool thing, but I guess don't we, sleep there. We could drive the RV to Vegas. And and not get the bed bugs. And not get bed bugs. Which I'm a big fan of. Okay, next one is from Susan. Hey Susan, she says we have the exact same trailer. How Aww, cool is that's that? that's cool. We bought ours in 2018 and we love it. The rear bathroom is a game changer, right? It is because my concern with the pop-up camper was, hey, what if we just need to pull over and rest, go to the bathroom, grab something out of the fridge? But you can't do that in a pop-up camper mm -hmm. because you have to pull the whole thing out in order to use it. Right. So when we were looking at different travel trailers, especially with a slide, it obstructed like you could have access to your bedroom maybe but like you miss the bathroom and you miss the kitchen and for us i love the fact that we can still sit in the lazy boys if we want to you can access the bathroom which is huge because you're not important. me yeah no i'm not peeing out the door and or in a cup in a cup pee in a cup and I, I, I might want to, you know, grab a drink or something. We don't have to stop at a 7-Eleven to do that. Yeah, the RV is definitely opening up things because we've been looking at all of the different parks. I mean, I feel like we want to travel the country, but we could pretty much hit every park in the state of Florida and never leave and yeah. going every other weekend. There's that many parks. But there's a lot of places that don't have bathrooms or they don't have hookups or anything like that. Or they have scary so ones. So this is really opening it up for us. Like we have the Ocala National Forest here and they have some sites with hookups, but it looks like a parking lot. I don't want to go camping in a parking lot. Right. I want to go camping in a national forest in the forest, right? <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> okay. Next one is from Shell. Hey, Shell. She says, we need a tour of the new RV. I also wanted to say that you always make my days better. I like knowing someone is going through the same issues as me. Shell, I'm glad to know that there's somebody going through the same issues as me because, you know, getting a comment like that, and again, you guys bless us so much more than we bless you, is because sometimes we'll put out a video and I think to myself, oh my Lord, what if it's just us, Joe? Yeah. I mean, especially when we're putting out things, I was looking at the footage for putting on the camping channel and I thought all my leg bits and all my stomach bits are just gonna be out there, people. Like, is this a problem? You're wearing like, yeah. A bikini, I mean, and it ain't necessarily pretty, but you know what? I think it's important for me to put it out there. It's not perfect but it's out there and it's because of you guys that I know that it's safe for me to put it out there. This is the body that I have. I cannot wait for everything to be perfect to put my journey out there. Mm -hmm. You guys 
don't wait until you have exactly your meeting, you know, your macro plan perfect to put out your struggles out there and share that with me. So thank you right. for doing that. Okay, next one is from our Facebook family group. It is from Lisa. Hey Lisa. Lisa said, just for fun, what am I? Dirty keto, lazy keto, ketovore. I eat mostly meat, eggs, and cheese. I have leafy greens every day, romaine and spinach, and I don't worry too much about ingredients like sucralose that I use in liquids like water enhancers and coffee syrups. I don't replace bread and pasta with the low carb junk, and I don't eat that stuff. I rarely have keto bars and snacks, and I have to watch my budget so I don't drink Zevia and Bangs. I mostly drink the flavored Walmart water. On a more serious note, getting frustrated with the keto people who do carb up days and seeing all the keto treats and keto breads and keto pastas. Looking for people or groups that uh, to follow that aren't doing that, but I don't think I fall in a full carnivore camp because of the greens and the ingredients. This group, especially Rachel and Joe, are probably the closest to what I try to follow. Okay, so why do you want to put a label on yourself? That's my question. I think that the best way to label her would be she's Lisa. Yeah. And I think she's awesome. I agree. And that's one of the reasons I love this term that Dr. Barry has come up with, right? right? It is the proper human diet. What does that encompass? All of it. Are you keto? Are you carnivore? Are you ketovore? Are you paleo? It's the proper human diet. We're cutting out as much of the processed foods as we can and eating the way our ancestors ate. I don't have a problem with eating vegetables. My thing about eating vegetables is I feel like you should be eating what is locally grown in season. Yeah. Why? That's how our ancestors ate. And honestly, you're going to enjoy it more because I don't think that you have like as much of an appreciation when it's accessible all the time. Sometimes like we forget about that. And mm -hmm. and I even would see people that eat fruit, but like you used to only get strawberries when strawberries were in season. You right. only got blueberries when blueberries were in season. If you live close to them, for example, we live here in Florida. We have mangoes, right? Right. Mangoes are in season in Florida one month out of the year. So that's the only time that we should be eating mangoes. It also means if you lived in New York, years ago, pre-industrial revolution and trains and everything else, you wouldn't have had mangoes, right? Because there's no way a mango is gonna make it by horse up to New York before rotting out. So you didn't get mangoes, but you got apples. Well, and, and that's I, the thing. Well, and I think that God is super smart and loving, and I think that he planted certain things in certain places for, for different people. Maybe there was something that you don't, you know, we needed mangoes that, like, somebody that was living in New York mm -hmm. didn't need like we needed. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think that it's important to to eat things seasonally if you're going to eat them because, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the mindless throw all of the fruit and make a smoothie out of a bunch of fruit that's honestly become tasteless. Right. Right. They don't even taste the same as the berries. When you're getting picked, you know, fresh picked berries, they taste different than the stuff that we were buying at Aldi. Right. That was like tasteless. But back to your question, what are you? It doesn't matter. Because honestly, you eat very similar to us. You try to eat a lot of whole foods, maybe occasional bar. Don't mind having a little bit of sucralose like we have in our keto chow or in our soda or anything like that. The problem is, is if you're looking for a specific group, for example, you go join Carnivore, everybody even in there has a different mentality of what is what carnivore. What is carnivore? I have been in Dr. Barry's Patreon support group forum and people telling us like, you're eating too much salt. Well, Dr. Barry eats too many salt. Well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, then why are you in here, Yeah. right? So There's I've gone into carnivore groups and carnivore people say you can't eat, you know, dairy. Well, dairy is from an animal. Therefore it is carnivore. So there's different levels. So my advice to you is, Find a group that's encouraging to you, like our Facebook family group. And if there's somebody who's not being encouraging in our Facebook family group, I want to know about it. Because they're leaving. Rachel wants to know about it because we're not going to put up with that. There is no going in there and telling you like what you're doing is wrong. Now, if you flat out ask us, what do you think of this product? I'm going to tell you, this is garbage. It's filled with weed or something like that. But we're never going to go in there and judge you. And nobody in our Facebook family group should be judging you or anything like that because everybody is on a different journey. When you first start, you can do things that 
I can't do. Well, and I don't feel bad bouncing anybody if they're being mean because I know that it's a, it's a safe assumption that there are plenty of arguing groups out there. Right. They will find another group to argue inside. So they're not going to be alone if they really enjoy arguing or belittling people. There's plenty of space for that. But yeah. I think that we need to be super protective of the spaces where it's safe and you're not going to be judged. Yeah. And I think our Facebook family group has like a good mix of a lot of different people. There's people who are pretty much carnivore, like Heath and Shelly. There's people who are just eliminating a lot of the nightshades, like Tara. You have some people who wanna eat a lot of different types of keto treats, and some people who have very few. And there's somebody in there that you can identify with. So, I mean, I want you to find whatever group you want, but I would try to really encourage you to don't put a label on yourself. It's not gonna be good for your self-esteem, and no matter where you go, you're never going to satisfy everybody in each group. Boy, that's been a 44-year lesson for me. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Beth. Hey Beth, she says, keto clothes tip. While you're still in your losing phase but aren't ready to buy new clothes, clip it. I use these for shirts that are too big. They also make stretchy ones that you can use for pants. Now this actually comes from our video the other day, which I'm gonna leave a link over Rachel's head, where we talked about clothes and how what you're wearing- It matters. Can absolutely impact your journey. Well, and it goes back to what, how you see yourself, how you talk to yourself. All of these things matter. It's not just a one dimensional thing when you're pursuing health goals. It's not just like, wow, I'm eating perfectly and I'm like exercising like a crazy person. And that's all it is. You've got to deal with the mind game that's mm -hmm. going on, how you talk to yourself and what you see when you look into the mirror. So I love this. As you are transitioning some of your clothes out, at least see what happens when you pin them, tighten them. Right. It may give you the boldness that you need to go out there and buy a new shirt. Right. Next one is from Jenny. Hey Jenny. She says, is anybody doing a more high protein approach because they are peri or post menopausal? Okay, let's talk about protein. Okay, protein is not a bad thing. No. Everybody thinks that like, if I eat too much protein, I'm going to spike my glucose. It doesn't work that way. Well, and we are used to like, your protein is supposed to be this big, right? Isn't right. that the standard American diet thing? And you're thinking to yourself, wow, I'm on keto and I'm already eating a lot of protein, but yeah, probably still not enough. Yeah, most of us don't eat enough protein. When you look at your macros, Protein is the most important one. The only one that's more important than that would be your carbs, and that is on the keto diet or on carnivore, keeping that as low as possible, like below 20 total carbs. But you wanna keep it low, because even the carbs, you don't have to have 20 you don't total carbs. Need them. That's just the max that you should have. Protein, when you look at your three macros of protein, fat, and carbohydrates, you absolutely need to hit your protein goal. And you should be figuring out, if you are figuring out your macros, everything should be based on how much protein you should eat. And you can figure that out by going over to Maria Emmerich's site. I will leave a link for that down below. She's got a phenomenal keto calculator. We don't even use ours. We recommend hers because she's gonna tell you how much protein you should be eating based on your body size, and then everything else fills in to accommodate that protein. Yeah, it's funny. I think about carbs like I think about my coffee. My brain tells me I absolutely have to have it, mm -hmm. but I don't. Yeah. I do not need coffee and I don't need carbs for nutrition. I enjoy it. Right. I like my coffee. I drink my coffee and my coffee may tell me like, my brain may tell me if you stop drinking coffee, something bad is going to happen to Joe, right? right? <laughs> but I don't need it. There are plenty of people that don't drink coffee and they live. So the same thing, carbohydrates are a luxury item. They're not a necessity. Yeah, but you absolutely need that protein. Now to answer your question in that roundabout way, Rachel, who is getting older, does eat a lot more protein hey. than she used to. I don't know if I like but that. But it has resulted in your hair being longer because you do collagen, your nails grow in better. And then I found Aussie Sprunch Spray again. <laughs> And, and like, yeah, it's gonna be so big, I'm gonna overtake your side of, of the bench. Yeah, but if you're not eating enough protein, you're gonna have problems with your hair, problems with your nail, you're gonna lose muscle mass, you're gonna lose bone density. Make sure you're eating all the protein. 
the thing is eat as much protein as you want and then use the fat to fill you up. That's why carnivores do so well. Yeah. You eat a whole bunch of meat and then try to eat fatty meat because that's going to sustain you. But they're eating very, very high protein and they're doing very well. Well, and my mom is having a lot of good results making sure that she's getting that meat that's got good collagen in it. She's, you know, eating that bone. Like she loves it. And yeah. it's and it's really good for somebody that's over 70 also. Yeah. Okay. Next one is from Claire. Hey Claire, she says, does anyone use a ketone breath analyzer? I tried looking for a 2KK video that might have some info, but I didn't find one. I can't decide if it would be worth the money or I should just stick with my blood ketone monitor. Since I have a CGM, I just don't feel like poking my finger. Okay, um, we actually do have a video on a breathalyze, a breath meter. I'll leave a link for that over Rachel's head. And we actually have tried two different ones. They do work very well. But there's a couple things I want to mention about them. First of all, they are kind of difficult to use. People think about them and they're like, oh, they're inaccurate. They're actually very accurate. The better ones, the more expensive ones. Right. You have to use one that has to be calibrated. I mean, I know Robert Keto Savage just did a review on another one, and that's a very good one as well. But the thing about them is, is they're measuring the acetone, yes. which is a byproduct from being in ketosis, from burning fat. That acetone is way in the bottom of your lungs. So to get a good measurement, yeah. you it's it's weird. You have to breathe in, breathe out, and then like get all of the air out and then push more after there's no air left and that's gonna get the acetone and that's how you're gonna get the correct readings. Also, you can't eat for a couple hours beforehand. Um, like if you have any alcohol, you can't test for like 24 to 48 hours because yeah. it's all going to affect the readings. And they are expensive. I'm going to be honest. If you have a CGM, I wouldn't even worry about ketones. I don't worry about ketones. And yeah. I know I'm wearing a Keto Code shirt. And we actually have another ketone meter that we have to do a review on. But we really don't test our ketones that often unless we are like, you know, doing some kind of an experiment or an extended fast. And we're just curious about things. But it doesn't matter to us. Your ketone level, unless you are doing something where you have to worry about things for like maybe epilepsy or something yes. like that, and you need That's to a have different matter. like for medical reasons, super high ketones, your ketone level doesn't matter. If you're not eating carbohydrates or eating less than 20 total carbs, you're guaranteed to be in ketosis unless you're going to cheat off of something. Yeah. And, and you will notice a blood spike if you're eating something you know, yeah. in any way, a glucose spike. Yeah, people measure their ketones all the time. And when you're, for the blood ones, that's what the, the breath is gonna be more accurate because it's telling you you're burning fat. The better ones, not the $40 meters you find on Amazon. You need the really good ones that can be calibrated. They're gonna tell you you're burning fat because that's what they're measuring, how much acetone from the burning of fat. But the blood ones are measuring the ketones that are floating in your blood that you're not using. Right. So. I know that this is not a popular opinion. Like we don't do blood uh, ketone you know, readings when we do our glucose tests on products because I don't feel it's accurate measurement of what's going on. Because if I eat a product 30 minutes later, that doesn't necessarily affect your ketones. And there's such a wide you know, margin of error on those devices. I don't think it really means much. If you're eating like a good low carbohydrate diet, you're going to be in ketosis. All that's doing is telling you how many extra ketones are in your body. Well, I've been on an extended fast and had a really high ketone measurement and then eaten like a ribeye steak, literally just meat, mm -hmm. and then tested the ketones again and it lowers. It's not that the steak is kicking me out right. of ketosis. It's just that you've had any type of food. Right. So. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I would stick with your CGM. The most accurate way to see what is going on with foods you eat and everything else is your CGM. You're gonna find very quickly, the lower your glucose, the higher your ketones. And when your ketones are really low, you'll find you have a glucose a little bit higher. That's the one that is the best thing to use for testing foods and seeing how your body is reacting. Okay, last one. It's from Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Jamie said, I used to dread seeing my dentist. Don't get me wrong. He's a great guy. But no matter how much I adhered to my dental hygiene regimen, I always ended up having a cavity, needing a falling filling replaced, or worse yet, a crown. I can relate. Now, after two years of Ketovore, uh, that is all in the past. 
I got a glowing report and was told that the other periodontal gum issues had either totally resolved or were at least 50% better than the last visit. He asked what I was doing differently and he exclaimed, no sugar, that's the ticket, when I told him about keto. Well, I mean, we've seen you know dentists talk about like no sugar candy and no sugar you know, with your toothpaste and that kind of stuff, but now we're actually living it. And yeah, we're a dentist dream or nightmare yeah. because you're not spending a bunch on a dental bill. That's definitely been the case for us. We go for cleanings now, not for fillings. Right, I can tell you, I have some of the worst teeth ever. And we've shared a couple of little snippets about it, but basically my entire life, like more than 50% of my mouth is filled with um, like removable bridges, with crowns, different things like that. I've just, since I was a little kid, I never had good teeth. Every time I would go to the dentist, I had like not one cavity, like five, six cavities, needing crowns. When Rachel and I first got married, I had to have seven teeth pulled in one sitting. Man, that was hard to hold your hand through that experience. And in that experience, I ended up with my two removable bridges, one on top and one on bottom. And every once in a while, you'll catch a glimpse of a video where I forgot to put them in before a video. Super it's sexy. super sexy, right? But I didn't even notice until last year. I I never could get through a year without having to have an emergency visit at a dentist. And because of all my problems with you know my teeth, I hate the dentist because I was always being drilled on and having teeth not pulled their fault. and everything like that. It's not their fault. I just didn't have good experiences. About a year ago, two years into keto, I noticed. I have had no issues with my teeth. Now we do go for cleanings, now, which I, I would go years without even cleaning because I was afraid sometimes. Yeah. I'm still wearing the same like dentures from 10 years ago and they fit well. So my teeth are actually improving. I've never, I have no more cavities or anything like that. It's amazing which is this lifestyle will do not just for your weight and for your mental thing, but even down to things like your teeth. Well, and if you're even thinking about transitioning your kids over yes. to keto, there's another pro in the pro column. No braces maybe? Well, I mean, even if they have to have braces because of movement of teeth, you're not gonna have them having to be drilled on and having all of these, you know, complications with the dentist right. because yeah, they're not, if they're not eating sugar, they're not going to have the problems either. Yeah. Well, that's going to be this week's keto on the couch. Leave some comments and questions for us down below in the comments section. You can either comment on things we've talked about today or just post some new questions and we will address them on next week's keto on the couch. Now, another little shameless plug, please do us a favor, head over to our other channel. I will leave a link for it down below to crazy campers hit the little subscribe button, even if you're not a camper. Do us a favor, go hit that subscribe button, help us build up that channel so that we can get a bunch of subscribers because again, the whole purpose of that is to reach people who aren't in the keto community and hopefully help them to find a better health journey. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, go ahead and check out the other 82 episodes of Keto on the Couch, which you can find in the playlist right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you're gonna find right over here. But you know, if you head this way or head this way, you gotta head this way, subscribe to our channel, hit the little bell icon, that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week, bye. bye.